Are you guys LDS? What's in it for me if I become a, a Mormon? That's a loaded question. Yeah. What would I get out of it? I'm not a Mormon. What do I get out of if I become a Mormon? Are you Christian? Yes. Yeah. Same concept, just, I don't know, different, little different views. More, I don't know, I guess more information on some respects, I guess. What is different in Mormonism than Christian? Mormonism is Christian. Um, it's just like a different belief of it. It's just like a separate set of pattern of beliefs. It's not necessarily like not Christian. We believe in Christ. We believe he was our savior. Um, There's a big difference would be that he's Lucifer's brother. Well, well, yeah. That's not Christian. Well, technically, aren't we all brothers and sisters, though? Yeah, but not brother of Lucifer. Didn't God create him? That's right, yeah. Um, when you die, where will you go? Depends on how you acted. You know, if you repented for sins or anything like that. Where are you going to go? I don't know. You don't know? I wish I knew. Could you end up in out of darkness and hell? I could. Does could that concern you? Yeah, it would suck. I can't say I'd be happy about going there. What about you? I hope I don't go to outer darkness. Yeah, so how do you know you're not going there? Just believe in Christ. The LDS faith believes that um, outer darkness is only for sons of perdition. Which I don't know if everybody's familiar with that term, but... What is it? It's someone who has the full knowledge of Christ, so someone who has known Christ, you know, like a Christian, but then also has been given extra information like Revelation, say, or just someone who's known that and then is denied him. So it's what do you think Christ. of the Bible verse that says, All liars are their part in the lake of fire? Is the lake of fire synonymous with outer darkness? Well, that's, a, that's the biblical description of hell. Revelation 21 verse 8, all liars are their part in the lake of fire, so that, that's pretty heavy. Am I speaking the truth? Yeah, no, that's true, definitely. Um, and I mean, who of us is free from lying? I mean, everybody tells so lies. So you have lied? Oh yeah. Have you lied? Yeah. So what are you called if you tell a lie? Uh, you're called a sinner, a liar. Liar. Have you ever stolen something? Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh, that's theft. Um, have you ever used God's name in vain? Oh yeah, guilty. No. I think I'm actually pretty good on that one. Pretty good. It's called blasphemy, we use God's name in vain. What I'm doing is going through some of the commandments, and the commandments just show what we are. It, they reveal sin to us. Jesus said, if you look with lust, you commit adultery in your heart. Have you ever looked with lust? Mm -hmm. yeah. So Ben, listen to this. You're a lying, thieving, blasphemous, adulterate heart. So if you face God on judgment day, would you be innocent or guilty? It depends if you truly repented of sin. What do you think of that? I agree. It says it talks about, you know, if you believe in Christ and, you know, trust in him that he's going to be your redeemer. He suffered for our sins. So no one expects us to be perfect. We're just supposed to try our hardest. And where we fell, he should make up for it. So if you fail, he makes up for it? He kind of pays the difference, I guess. You're not sure of that? I, I mean, that's how I would... I'm sure of it. I just... What do you think, Ben? Is she speaking, is she speaking uh, Mormon doctrine? I don't know if it's necessarily Mormon doctrine, but that's my set of beliefs. I believe that's how most of the LES faith would stand behind. The Bible says something different. It says that, that Christ died for our sins once and for all, and the moment you trust in him, you're completely justified. You're made right with God. You're made perfect by God's grace. There's nothing to do with you living a good life or trying to please God because you can't. If you're a lying, thieving, blasphemous, adulterate heart, you can't please God. The only thing you can do is repent and trust in Him. The minute you do that in a heartbeat, God justifies you, cleanses you of sin, and you're born again. And God gives you a new heart and new desires so that you know you're going to escape the damnation of hell. In fact, the New Testament says if you're a Christian, if you're born again, you can have boldness on the day of wrath. Boldness, total courage before God because you know that you're sheltered by the blood of Christ from God's wrath against your sin. So trust in God and pray for the Mormon. And remember, when a person leaves the Mormon church, he's not just leaving his religion, he's leaving a whole way of life, possibly his friends, his family, and his job. But remember, Jesus said, what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Over 40 years ago, my wife and I were married in this temple behind me, and we were very active in the Mormon church, and we were very successful. I held positions as elders quorum president three different times, 
and I was called from that position into the Stake High Council and I served there for three and a half years. And it was while I was in that position that we started studying Mormonism and studied ourselves out. Well, we decided we had to separate ourselves from the Mormon Church and the only way we could get out of the Mormon Church at that time was to be excommunicated. As part of that excommunication, our names were read in the local men's priesthood meeting at, at the ward that we attended. Well, there's no reason given. The letter just states that uh, we have been excommunicated. And so the following Monday morning, the rumor in town was that I had committed adultery. And by the end of the week, not only had I committed adultery, but I had gone into fundamentalism, which is polygamy, that I had six and possibly even seven wives. So we decided we had better start telling people the real reason why we had left the church, that it was doctrinal, that the doctrines were incorrect, they were not biblical. Well, that caused a lot of concern to the leadership of the Mormon church, the local leadership. So in their state conference, the state president announced that since Higley's have now left the church, he didn't use the word excommunicate, that, that Higley's have left the church, please don't do business with them. We had a retail business, plus we had a real estate and development company. They boycotted our businesses and literally put us out of business because the town that we lived in was over 85% Mormon at the time. It was a real struggle for us financially, but God is faithful and has provided for us ever since. We lost our businesses, we lost our home, we lost our vehicles. But uh, God provided for us and has continually blessed us, and uh, we praise God for all that He's done for us. So be patient, continue to plant seeds of truth, and never forget, salvation is of the Lord. I mean, all the years that I had lived in Utah up to that point, almost 20 years, I had never had a Christian who came to me and said, would you listen to this? Would you hear this? Would you check this? No, nobody. And then even though we knew a lot of people, you know, when we were in business, you know, not personally, they were not, uh, the Christians or the non-Mormons in our community were not our friends. Um, because we only had Mormon friends. And it was interesting because after we left the Mormon church, there were many people that we then, when we started finally going to Christian churches, after almost two years of studying the Bible alone, we recognized some of the people that we had seen in our store. We had talked to them, we had visited them, you know, in a business level, but nobody ever had told us anything. And, they were saying now to us, well, we are so glad you're out of Mormonism. I felt like saying, no, thanks to you. You know, it, you didn't care enough to tell me the truth, but they, many of them said, we thought you were so uh, happy as a Mormon, you were content as a Mormon, you were such a nice people. We didn't want to disturb you, your life in that way. We hope this program has been helpful. If you're a Mormon and have questions, please visit our website at wearethemaster.com and let us help you. And if you're a Christian, continue to pray for the lost and reach out with what you've learned from us and other wonderful ministries devoted to reaching Mormons. God bless you.